In this segment, we're going to talk about the transformer architecture. I've been a little sloppy in some of what I've said so far, and sometimes when I talk about uh, multi-head attention or I call things transformer layers when I really mean multi-head attention, um, but it's important to note that the transformer architecture itself is based on multi-head attention but involves a few other very important components, which now we're going to look at. So, in particular, we start off by taking uh, our input sequence, a bunch of uh, kind of embeddings laid out uh, in, a, in a sequence, and feeding them into the multi-head attention uh, layer that we've been building up uh, over the past several segments. After that, uh, the kind of main other piece that functions to make transformers do what they do is a feedforward layer that operates over each word individually. So we've talked a lot about feedforward neural nets for language modeling, and this is something a little bit different. If we have, let's say, three words as input to our multi-head attention, our multi-head attention is going to you know, have all of those look at each other and produce three vectors as output. Then each of those three vectors independently gets this feedforward network run over it to produce three new vectors that are outputs from that process. Um, and this feedforward network is just a very simple, standard, like one hidden layer feedforward neural network, nothing fancy going on there. Now, there's two other things in this diagram, which is from the uh, attention is all you need paper. The first is all these arrows. So what are these arrows doing? The arrows are reflecting residual connections in the model, which basically say we are going to take the input to the model that's given to the multi-head attention mechanism, and we're going to add it to the output from this mechanism. And this is a trick that's used in training deep neural networks to enable gradients to flow more easily between the output and the input, because you don't actually want the model to like have to use every layer, so you provide these residual shortcuts where it can kind of skip the layers. And the way you do that is by adding the inputs and the outputs. Um, and the final piece here is uh, what's called layer normalization, where uh, we do a kind of rescaling so that things are more on the same scale, and this helps uh, the optimizer do a better job of uh, training everything, even when there's like a whole lot of different layers going on, but we want to train everything with a single uniform learning rate. All right, let's talk a little bit about the vector dimensions of everything here, because this is pretty important if you want to understand how transformers are implemented. So the inputs are going to be a dimension we call D model. And this is also going to be the output of the whole layer. And this is sort of, in some sense, the native dimension of this architecture. Now, the queries and keys, these have to have the same dimension. But remember, we're multiplying them. We're multiplying the inputs by W, Q, and W, K in order to get these. So W, Q, and W, K don't have to be square. So we can cast things down to a smaller size D, K uh, that we're then going to do our dot products in and, and do our attention computation with. And these are going to be smaller because it's going to save a lot of computation in order to do things that way. The values uh, dv also have a separate dimension. Um, remember that when we get to the output of this layer, uh, we are going to multiply by another output matrix uh, to basically make everything the right size again and to combine things across the multiple heads. So uh, you know we can make these whatever size they want, and they'll eventually get back to d model before this residual layer. However, because of the residual layer, we're going to add the input to the output. So the output has to be the same size as the input here. So once we get through all the multi-head attention, we need to get back to d model. And then finally, we have the feedforward network, which can uh, blow things up to a larger dimension, which we're going to call D internal here, uh, and then uh, kind of collapse it back down. So it has like one big hidden layer in the middle there, and then again comes back down to D model because we're going to have another residual connection. And so now this whole transformer block is going to have D model as input and D model as output, and then we can stack that as many times as we want and keep everything the same size. And what sizes are those? If we look at the original Vaswani paper, uh, we've got some numbers in the top left here. Uh, we've got six layers, that's what the n is, 512 for D model, so kind of a moderate size there. The feed forward is 2048. So like I was saying, that's a big, that's a kind of big layer. Uh, we're blowing things up by a lot and then uh, kind of shrinking them back down. And DK and DV are actually quite small. They're 64. 
And part of the reason for this is because it, get, it gets very expensive to use very large uh, values here because you're doing these expensive matrix multiplies. Uh, and um, these seem to be kind of sufficient for uh, you know, modeling the interactions between tokens, which is what the attention mechanism has to do. Now, if we look at how these things scale, the table below is from the GPT-3 paper. Uh, we see that the D model has gotten a lot, lot bigger, up to like 12,000. And then the D head here uh, of 128, this is what we call DK, it actually hasn't gotten that much larger, right? So the complexity of the interaction around attention is not really where most of the action's at. Most of the action is in the D model and also the D internal of the feed forward network. Um, if we look at where the actual uh, floating point operations are happening in this model, we can look at this as a fraction of the overall computation. This is a model called OPT uh, that's like an open source version of GPT. So we know a little bit more about what's going on here. Um, the multi-head attention uh, floating point operations, if we go to the largest model at the bottom of this table, are only 17% of the operations. 80% of the operations are in that feed forward network. So even though I've been saying, yeah, okay, attention transformers, like these are the same thing. Attention is a very important component, but most of the computation is in the feed forward network. And when we think about, you know, why does ChatGPT kind of know all these facts about the world? A lot of that is because these huge feed forward layers can just store so much of that stuff. All right, so now we're uh, kind of almost ready to understand the full model. We're gonna come back to it a little bit later when we talk about seek-to-seek -seek models because the original transformer paper presents an encoder-decoder model. So it's not for language modeling, it's actually for mapping like one sequence of tokens to another sequence of tokens. Um, we don't really need to think about that right now. We can just sort of think about uh, the encoder being a uh, language model and ignore the decoder entirely, entirely. There's gonna need to be some modifications to do that, but we'll come back and talk about that more when we see how this connects to language modeling. That's the end of this segment.